External SSDs are great devices for creators. They're easy to carry, they're fast, and less fragile than traditional hard drives. Like most things in life, you pay for speed and capacity, so they can be pretty expensive. There are a lot of SSD options out there, and the specifications touted in the marketing can be confusing, if not outright misleading. Synthetic benchmarks don't always do the best job of showing what to expect in real-world use. With factors like cache and thermal throttling, you can have two SSDs perform similarly in one test and then perform very differently in the next test. On five different SSDs, I've timed how long it took for four different batch sizes to transfer over from my MacBook Pro. 10 gigabytes, 25 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, and 100 gigabytes. These SSDs range in price from about $80 to $350. Their capacities go from 500 gigabytes to two terabytes, and they have various levels of dust, splash, and drop protection. They also have warranties starting from three years and go up to five years. Some of you may notice there are a couple of popular SSDs not on this list, the Samsung T5 and the Samsung T7. Now, these are both good drives. They work well for a lot of people. The Samsung T5 competes more with SanDisk's less expensive Extreme Portable SSD, and they perform pretty similarly, but the SanDisk is rated IP55 for splash and dust protection. The Samsung T7 claims about 1,000 megabytes per second read and write. Now, it's priced in between the Crucial X8 and the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And if you're interested in hearing more, why the T7 has not found a place in my bag, I will link down below to an article from Anon Tech. Okay, so let's move on to the test results, starting with a 10 gigabyte transfer of photo and video files. In the chart, I've grouped the G Technology SSD with the lower spec SanDisk SSD because they're both USB 3.1 Gen 2 and they'll have similar slower speeds closer to 500 megabytes per second, and the rest will promise roughly double that. Not a lot of surprises here, and with this size of a transfer, it might make more sense to stick with a more economical choice. So let's move on to the 25 gigabyte transfer. The G drive took about 55 seconds, and the Sandus took a little over a minute. Again, the three faster drives perform pretty similarly between 25 and 27 seconds. So far, the results are pretty consistent. In this range, I think there's still an argument to stay on the budget side, given we're only saving about 30 seconds. So you could save a few dollars or put your money toward more capacity if that's more of a priority. Let's take a look at what happens with a 50 gigabyte transfer. In the 50 gigabyte test, the differences in the two X8 SSDs are beginning to appear. Not only does the two terabyte have more capacity, it has more cache and upgraded flash memory. If this is the sort of file transfer that you commonly work with, then one of these faster drives start to look more appealing, cutting nearly a minute out of the wait time. So what about a 100 gigabyte transfer? Now the differences are really showing themselves, and not just in the slowest and fastest performers. The higher spec Crucial 2 terabyte X8 is starting to flex its advantage over the less spec one terabyte version. The gap from the most affordable and slowest SSD to the priciest and fastest SSD is over two and a half minutes. What's that, about 250%? Okay, for a budget pick, the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD is a solid performer and it's inexpensive. I've actually edited video on it just fine. But if you have a case where you really do need something more rugged, the G Drive's IP67 rating and crush proof resistance to 1,000 pounds might make its $300 price tag worth it. While the SanDisk Extreme Pro is the fastest, you may be wondering where is the 2 gigabit per second performance? Well, that speeds only over USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which is on very few devices, and most of us might be paying for a bandwidth that we never get to take advantage of. Among the top performers, the Crucial X8 is much less expensive than the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And if you can live without that IP55 splash and dust proof rating, it makes a compelling choice. Be aware though that SSD prices tend to fluctuate and that can shift the balance considerably among two or three SSDs that you might be considering. So be sure and do the research on which might work best for you and keep an eye on those prices. Coming up soon will be another video comparing these SSDs with an iPad Pro. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing. Now, I have other videos on technology and 
also videos on photography. And I hope that you'll check those out because that is, after all, what drives all of this. That's going to be it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Deep breaths.